in introduction. First Timothy two seven. For this I was appointed a preacher and an apostle. I'm telling you the truth. I'm not lying. As a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. I believe that is a description of Bengi. He is truly, Bingo, I'm sorry. He is truly an apostle. As you were here last night, if, if you weren't here, I would ask that all of you just go back and watch the live streaming because he had spoken some things that will just change most of our doctrines and we'll have revelation as we had never had before. He's spoken. Um, Pastor Risa said something really profound uh, this morning, and, and we were just uh, we were just opening this um, time of prayer. I believe it was in the prayer, but she had said this, and I want you to repeat that if you would, dear. Will you remember what it was? It was really <laughs> profound. It was about. It was just about the greatness of the giftings of this. That it was. Uh, we have not heard this kind of teaching in this particular area. The early church. First century church, you get it? You got it? Okay. I got it. <laughs> yes, that this, this was one of the most profound, powerful first century church teachings that, that we have heard. Very good. Wow, that's powerful. So, we want you to know, too, we're going to put some baskets up here, and we want to sow, and we want to sow, and we want to abundantly sow. So when he leaves here, he is going to be so abundantly blessed that he won't even be able to carry it all. Huh? How's that sound? But we're going to give him one check. It'll be a heavy check, though. Amen. So thank you. Thank you, Eric. Any, uh, thank you, Rach, um, for all you're doing. You ready? Let us have it, brother. Both <laughs> barrels, okay? Both barrels. We love both barrels coming at us. Welcome. Welcome. Awesome. Very good. Yeah, stand if you would, everybody, just to honor him in the way that he should be honored. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Please, could you come to the front? Let's, let's honor both of you. Please, uh, man. Please come. The Bible says, honor to whom honor is due. We honor them as God's gifting stores. I didn't hear you big amen. amen. We celebrate them and we are grateful to God for their ministry. Without their vision, we will not be here. I didn't hear you big amen. amen. Let's give them a big God bless you clap. Hallelujah. Give them a big God bless you clap. We love them, we love them, we love them, we love them, we love them. We love them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, in Africa, we've learned a few things that, that is making the church is packed out. A church service like this in Nigeria is 500,000, 10,000, 100,000, running multiple services because there are some revelations that we have that you need. I didn't hear a big amen. How do you connect the anointing that they carry? How do you connect the anointing? That they carry. The Bible says he that blesses a prophet. Not he that hangs around a prophet. He that blesses a prophet. Blessing a prophet may be you buy him a wristwatch that he will value. Blessing a prophet may be you taking the woman of God for shopping and paying her bills. So he that blesses, not he that says amen to the preaching of a prophet. 
he that blesses. When you take off the material and financial burden from them, they can preach the gospel with liberty, without stress Amen. of how their bills will be paid. So blessing them should become a way of life to you. I didn't hear a big hallelujah. In Africa, in Nigeria, we buy cars for pastors. We buy cars, cars for pastors. So that they can have the convenience to be able to visit people that are sick. What is the purpose of blessing a prophet? It's not to make him vain. No, it's to empower him to do the work. You didn't hear a big amen to that. If you pay his bills, he can spend time in the presence of God without distraction. Look at those, that wonder. Please, could you stand, sir? Stand. Please stand. Yes, doing a great work. Let's give him a big God bless you, clap, people. And I saw our pastor too. Please, could you stand? Give him a very good, big God bless you, clap. Where are the other pastors in this church? Stand up on your feet. Let's love you. All the other pastors in the church, stand up on your feet. Give them a big God bless you clap. When you are financially a blessing to them, I've not eaten since Friday, Friday, Saturday, today, Sunday, I'll eat later after this meeting. If I had the burden of paying my hotel bill, I would not be able to do that. That stress would be on my mind. That is the reason why blessing a prophet should come to you naturally because of the harvest that is ripe. The more they try to look for money to do the work, the more people go to hell. Jesus said the harvest is ripe. So wasting any time we make hell claim more souls. So blessing the prophet should come as a way of life. I want to teach you that. You don't know that. You don't know that. And I'm going to give you an opportunity to do what I've said. That's why they are still standing out there. Look at him. He led us in worship. We're dancing. Do you know that anointing is useless to you until you bless him? The anointing that you have not ministered to cannot break your yoke. You didn't hear what I said, no. <laughs> say, cast your bread upon the water. You say, you shall find it after many days. The many days is the miracle that you're looking for. But until you cast your bread into that kind of anointing, you will not find it after many days in healing, deliverance, financial breakthrough. You must cast your bread. Look at him going around, making sure everything is working. If you are a blessing to him, there's an anointing he carries. He's both the son of man and the son of God. Always see the son of God in the man of God. If you see the son of God, you will sign unbelievable checks. I've given out 64 cards to different men of God. Yet I'm a man of God. Because the anointing that they carry are peculiar. We know in part. So if there's any anointing you admire, sacrificially sow into it so that the anointing can become yours. Any anointing you admire. Because the Bible says where your treasure is. Not where your confession is. Where your treasure, where your treasure is, where your heart is. We are going to bless them this morning. Take out an offering, please. I call it prophetic seed. We are going to bless them. Bless them. Please come, pastors, please come. come. We are going to bless all of you. Come. All the pastors come outside. We are going to bless all of you. Yadabala Rabashanamada. 
There are things I want to say that will be strong. You can't receive it until you do this first thing I want you to do. When you release your substance, my daughter, she's the one paying my hotel bill. You know, you know in Nigeria, you're in Nigeria. You see the way we take care of men of God? Am I correct, ma? Don't you see the, the way she looks? Looking blessed? Because you can't bless a prophet and you are not blessed. It's impossible. Please come out. We want to bless you. You sang. You ministered to us. Let us bless you. Let us bless you. Please. Let us bless you. Let us bless you. And I want, I want to share something with you. When you see the singer singing, bless them. You've been dancing out here. So wonderful. Now move to the next level. Provoke the anointing with a sacrificial seed. Lift up your hand. Say Holy Ghost. Say Holy Ghost. The anointing that they carry will work for me this morning. As I bless them financially, materially, my destiny will be turned around in the name of Jesus. Begin to come out. Begin to come out. Just go to any of them. Just begin to come out. Quickly. Just come out. Quickly. Quickly. Just come out. Quickly. Just go. Be, be, be in the spirit. Just bless. Put it, put it there. 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 Quickly. Quickly. Put it there. Put it there. Put it there. Just come out. Put it in my hand. Come out. Put it in my hand. There's an anointing on my hand. Put it on my hand. Put it on my hand. Put it on my hand. I'll drop it for you. Put it on my hand. Put it on my hand. I'll drop it for you. Drop, put it on my hand. There's an anointing. There's an anointing. Come on, put something on my hand. There's an anointing that I carry right now. Put it on my hand. Put it on my hand. Everyone, everyone. There's an anointing. There's an anointing. There's an anointing. There's an anointing. Maradaba shada ba rada ba lebrada ba 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 re 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 bocha lebrada ba shada ba lebrada ba shiga ba rada ba lebrada ba shada ba rada lebrada ba shada ba re 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 lebrada ba shaga ba ra lebrada ba shanda lebrada ba shadi re bo lebrada ba shada la ba lebrada ba sha la gada ba shadi re lebre re bo shana ra ra lebrada ba shanda lebrada ba shadi re bo la da ba shada ba zere re bo lebrada ba shika ba rada ba lebrada ba shanda la brada ba lebrada ba shanda lebrada ba zere re bo Lebrada basha, lebrada basha, ndalaba, lebrada ba, legere bo, shandalaba, lebrada basha, dele bo, shindalaba, sake le bo, shadaba, lebrada basha, nda, lebrada bo, rabarada ba, shere bo, sata la bo, shanda, liga bo, sete, lebara zada ba, yada bo, shadaba raza, de de de, leba kata barada, lemana ina lara, lebrada bo, shate beke te bele bo, shandala brede bo, yada ba sate le bo, shata, ge de bo, shita, labara bo, God bless you, lebrada. Lift up your hands and begin to speak in tongues. As loud as you can. There's power here. There is power. Naga da 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 da. Nebaladaba shahatabaya. There's power here. There's power here. If you've not given that prophetic seed, step out. Begin to shout in tongues. Begin to speak in tongues. Bless you. Begin to speak in tongues. Your miracle is in your mouth. Your miracle is in your mouth. It's in your mouth. Speak as loud as you can. Healing is in your mouth as you speak in tongues. Hey, Wave your hands and speak in tongues. The power of God is here. Wave your hands and speak in tongues. Wave your hands wherever you are and speak in tongues. The Holy Ghost is here. 
The Holy Ghost is here. The Holy Ghost is here. The Holy Ghost is here. The Holy Ghost is here. The Holy Ghost is here. Marele Busha. Amen. Amen. Pastor, we celebrate you, awesome ministers. You are not ordinary. You are oracles of God. We honor God's grace upon your life. The more you honor men of God, the more their angels can work for you. Because every man of God has a group of angels that work with his commission. So when, when you don't honor a man of God, his angels will turn against you. That's why many of you have troubles and crises. These this, this men of God are not on the same level with you. That is a lie. God anointed them for you. Honoring them is just wisdom. I didn't hear a big amen. amen. Say we honor you. Let's say it. Let's say we honor you. As God's prophets, as God's servant. God bless you. As they go back to their seat, give them a big God bless you clap. Amen. Give it. Amen. Pastor, Pastor, hope you know that it's not for the church. Hope you know it's not for the church. It's for you. Let, let me establish that. But it doesn't go back to the church post. You see, for God so loved the world that he gave. John chapter 3 verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He loved the world. For God so loved the world. And because he loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. So that redemption can come to the world. If God loved the world and gave his son, what have you given for the world to hear about his son? If God gave his only son, what sacrificially have you done for his son to be known by the world? What have you done? You know how we bless them? Because they are making the son known to the world. That was how we blessed them. We are not blessing them to enrich them, no. We are making them rich so that they can be effective outreaches. He for God so loved the world that he gave. Look at the kind of seed he gave. It was too qualitative. Why are you giving God peanuts and you call it offering? Why do you battle with your tithe? Why do you struggle with your tithe? For God so loved the world. Why do you hate a session of the world and you are a racist? What God loved, you hate a part. That means you are anti-God. The Bible never said, for God so loved a session of the world. He said, love the world. Black, white, call it any color. Why do you see colors if you are actually a partner with God? Why did God give you the Holy Ghost? I shared yesterday. Why did God? To tell you how passionate God is about the world, there is the reason why the third person in the Godhead, the Holy Ghost, is, was made to remain on earth 
so that we can be empowered to make Jesus known. You know everybody in, on your phone book, your contact list, God will hold you responsible if they go to hell. True love from a believer is to see his mother born again. That is true love. A true love from a believer is to see her friends, his friends, saved. For God so loved the world. He gave. How much time have you given for the salvation of souls? How much time? How much time? You know the Holy Spirit? God gave his son. He also gave the Holy Spirit. Look at verse 8 of Acts chapter 1. But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Ye shall be witnesses unto me. Unto Jerusalem. In Jerusalem. Both in Jerusalem and in Lord Judea. In Samaria. And unto the uttermost part of the earth. Why do you have a local vision? I'm in America because I can see the world that God loved. The uttermost part of the earth. You know why there is disunity in the body of Christ in America? We are seeing our local denominations. We are not seeing the world that God loved. When you start seeing your denomination, you start building an empire and fortress around your denomination. And because you do not want the other denomination to take your members that have stopped growing, you start preaching doctrines to keep them in captivity. That is the reason for the heresy in American church. For God so loved the world, even the Holy Ghost was given for the world. When you speak in tongues without having the salvations, the salvation of souls in mind, if you are not careful, you will become deluded. You know why? You know what Jesus said? The last thing he said before he left this world. The last thing he said before he left this world. Go ye into all the world. This said be one. He said go ye into all the world. That was what he said. Why are you so indifferent to what God is passionate about? You know why you can't tithe? You can't tithe because you can't see what your tithe will do for the work of God. You are seeing how big your tithe is. Now see. Look at verse, look back chapter 16. I want to show you scriptures. If your friends are not saved, all the gifts of the spirit you have is useless. You shall be my witness. David was so passionate about God. He said, I will not give to God that which costs me nothing. I will not give to God dead offerings because I am passionate. He said, Jesus said, he said, the zeal of my father's house has consumed me. Any church that is not growing has lost the vision of soul winning. Any church. You know true Christian maturity? You were once a little boy. You began to grow. As you matured, you took a wife. You now had children. Your maturity was not because you were speaking better English language. No. The maturity was not that you were wearing clothes. No. Your maturity climax is when you start reproducing. True spiritual maturity is reproduction. Who have you led to the Lord in all your maturity? That means your maturity is questionable if it has not produced your kind. So true Christian maturity is your ability to lead others to the altar, to Christ. Not your ability to prophesy. Not your ability to teach the way I'm teaching now. No! Anybody could, could go to a good Bible school and teach the way I'm teaching now. True maturity is reproduction. We are your kind. If you were to die today and you went to heaven, how many souls you want to Christ will welcome you? Or you will enter heaven so quietly. 
because you never touched any life. Not with your money, not with your time, not with anything. You lived in the shopping malls, changed cars, bought more houses, but never did anything for the kingdom of God. What a waste. See, it says, it says, verse 15 of Luke, Mark chapter 16. He said, go ye, said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Go ye to all the world and preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. Do you know little boys in, in Africa holding mega crusades? Crusades of 500,000, 50 people? Because Jesus said, go ye into all the world, the world of entertainment. Go ye into the world. The world of business. The world of education. So, your, your, your profession, God has planted you in that profession to be his ambassador. You don't work to make a living, you work to make an impact. ye. When you are idle, Satan will begin to afflict you with sickness because you are idle. He said, go ye. It's an action word. Any church that is not building a church without walls is dead. Go ye. Then he said, because you will go. He said, these signs. Verse 17. These signs shall follow them that believe because they went. Because they went. But do you know what? We want signs to follow us in the church. Not in the church. It's when you go ye that signs will follow you. You will not see unusual power until you go ye. He said, let your light so shine before men, not before the church. He said, let your light so shine before men. You are a lawyer. Let your light shine before other lawyers that they might see you walking in righteousness and want to be a part of righteousness. You are an educationist, a teacher. Think about strategy to bring your students to Christ without they even knowing that you are bringing them to Christ. Go ye into all the world. Every time your baba baps your hair, be calculating in your heart, be strategizing how to win into Christ. Go ye, then signs will follow. If you don't go ye, financial signs or millions, financial favor will not follow. Why? What will you use the money to do when you have not gone forth? Do you know why Islam is on America? The church in America is no more going forth. No more going forth. We are building fine, fanciful churches that are empty. He said the harvest is ripe. The harvest is ripe. You are, you are a doctor, a medical personnel. Look at people in pain. Show them the love of Christ and help them know Christ as they go into the other world. Don't let them die without Christ. No matter the best medical attention you give them, if you do not help them to find salvation, you fail as a medical doctor. You fail. You don't work as a doctor. You don't work as a nurse. You don't work as a lawyer to earn a living. You work to make an impact. So these signs shall follow them that believe. Because they went. In my name, they shall cast out devils. There are no devils in genuine believers. So why are you trying to cast out one in a genuine believer? So devils are outside there where the sinners are. So you cannot see devils go until you go forth. He said you shall cast out devils. From people that are not saved. You deliver them from the captivity of darkness that has made them not to be saved. What is your challenge? You are so self-centered. 
Me, 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 me. Mammon. Oh, yeah. What is ruling the church in America? Mammon. That's why you don't tight. You can no more see what your tight can do. Once the tight is very big, you say, no, God doesn't deserve it. Because you cannot see souls that your tight can reach. In Nigeria, we are buying aircraft for men of God. Aircraft. There's a ministry in Nigeria that has three aircraft. Not for luxury. So that they can meet the target for crusades around Africa. A team is using one, one, one jet plane. Another team. Crusade team is using another jet, jet Another missionary group is using another jet plane. But in America, you buy the jet as a social symbol. That is where the church in America has missed it. Go ye. What has your money done for any man of God to go forth? I was teaching a few days ago somewhere. A lady came to me after, after teaching. She was almost in tears. She said, I have a few men of God around me who are a blessing to my life. As we were teaching, I began to feel guilty that I have not blessed them one day. If you have not blessed him one day, you have not blessed her one day, what are you doing here? When your presence does not make the gospel to run faster, your presence is useless. When your presence around the ministry, around the man of God, does not help the man of God to run faster with the mandate of winning souls, you have become a nuisance. That is where gossiping starts. Because when you are idle, you become the devil's workshop. You know why people gossip in the church? Because they, 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 they were supposed to be gossiping Jesus. Gossiping about Jesus to so their neighbor. When Jesus healed me. Jesus did this. Now, because they are not doing that, they start gossiping one another. Yes. Can you see souls? Can you see your family members that are not saved? When you are speaking in tongues, your tongues will become meaningful. Those in your profession that are stubborn to the gospel, when you are speaking in tongues, your tongue become meaningful for their salvation. You are too self-centered. That's why you are sad. That's why you are happy. After church service, you are depressed. All the noise is gone. All the happiness is gone. You go like that. You are waiting for the next service so that you take your usual pills. But the reason, until you are an outreach, you will not be rich in joy. The joy you distribute will multiply in your life. You didn't hear what I said. The happiness that you spread will multiply in your life. Because the Bible says, give, it shall be given to you. Look at verse 19. Look at verse 19. So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. Verse 20. And they went forth and preached everywhere. Not in every church, everywhere. Can you see? Everywhere. Is it in your Bible? Everywhere. They didn't remain in the church. They preached everywhere. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The Lord walking with them confirming the word with signs following outside there, not in inside there. Once you can't see souls, you begin to, to, to be useless to God. Nobody visited me. I don't know. I don't know. When I came to church, nobody greeted me. Everybody just looked at me. Look at a mother that is a baby. You are supposed to be a mother of many spiritual children. But you are still a baby. It's baby that seeks for love and attention. Paul said, when I was a child, I reasoned and thought as a child. Children want to receive and receive. He said, when I became a man, I threw away childish things. The childish things is you not winning souls. Mature to winning souls. Mature. 
Don't be a receiver. Be a giver. Yeah. The Bible says it is more blessed to give than to receive. Did you hear that? Yeah. And you know that if you are not reaching out to souls, angels don't even know if you are in God's kingdom anymore. You didn't hear what I said? Yeah. I'll show you scripture. Don't be confused. Once you are no more winning souls, you are no more winning souls, you just come to church, you dance and dance and dance and dance and dance. All your friends are going to hell. All your neighbors are going to hell. They don't even know the address of this place. When you are coming here, you don't allow anybody to know where you are going to. But when there is a party, you are the, you are the, you are the ambassador for the party. Everybody must come to that party. But when it is Jesus' party, you go silent. Verse 8, Luke chapter 12. Angels don't know those who are not winning souls. Don't know them. I'll show you scriptures. Look at verse 12. Also I say unto you, whosoever shall confess me before men, him shall the son of man also confess before the angels of God. Did you hear what I said? Did you read the Bible? He said, if you confess me before men, I will confess you before the angels of God. Now, go to the next verse. But he that denied me before men shall be denied before the angels of God. You see, the angels of God don't know you. Don't know you. Because God looks at you since you got born again. If they calculate all your tithe, it's just $50 after 28 years in the Lord. Actually, you no more believe in tithe. You used to believe in tithe before. Every money that enters your hand, every money, you worked for it, or it was a gift. One tenth belongs to God to renew your supply. Every time you eat your tight, you make your finances tight. Every time you refuse, can't you build a church for God? A whole auditorium. You build it. David did. In Nigeria, in Kenya, ask people, ask the people. People are building churches and giving it the keys to churches. Am I correct, man? No, check. Google it and check if I'm, if I'm wrong. The biggest ministries today are in Nigeria. Forget about CNN. Forget about your fake news that tells you that we live on top of trees. Look, look at what I'm wearing. Look at what I'm wearing. This is not peanut. A gift. It's a gift. Look good and represent Jesus well. Have this. What I'm wearing is a gift. They dressed me up to be a good representative of the man I speak on his behalf. In Nigeria, we take men of God for shopping so that they don't look shabby and discourage people by their shabbiness when they go and preach. When you don't see the harvest, you can't sacrifice. When you don't see the harvest, you can't stretch your faith when you give. He said, if you deny me, every time you eat your tithe, you are denying Christ. Denying Christ. Every time God places on, on your heart, I bought complete musical instrument for not one church, not two church. Bought complete musical instrument. And every time I have done it, God has always told me, he said, you brought celebration to my people. You brought praise to my people. Your life will never be boring. Why must it be the whole church that must do it? If you are kingdom minded. Why are you denying God financially? You sign checks for all kinds of things. Big check, $10,000, $20,000. But when it comes to God, it's $5. That is how small your God is. But when you dance, it looks as though your God is big. But when you give, your God becomes small. Say, God is looking for true worshippers. Those who dance and their finances also dance. If it has not touched your money, it has not touched your heart. Say, where your treasure is, there your heart is. Not where your dancing is. 
We are your treasure. People are selling their cars in Nigeria and giving the money. Their cars, car, car. They sell it. Go organize crusade. And they attract trekking. And people are asking them, where's your car? He said, I gave my car for Jesus to be promoted. He said, when I'm lifted up, I will draw men. You don't lift Jesus up only in the church. You lift him out there where the sinners are. He said, angels, who are, who are the agents for answer prayers? Angels. So when you are denied before angels, how will they carry courier your answer to you when you pray? So when a non-soul winner is praying, God shuts the window of heaven. He said, I'm hearing a smelly odor from the earth. A useless person. God views you from the point of usefulness to his kingdom. That's what he views you. He cuts the fig tree because he didn't find fig on the tree. Where are your fruits? Where are your fruits? You said, you said, you said, you said, God will not, angels will not carry answer to my prayer. What is, what is, what is that? Is that true? I'll show you scripture. Don't be confused. John chapter 15, you see it. Listen to me. Do you know why God must bless me? I talk about souls all around the world. I win souls. Ask her. Sometimes we go out to, to shop. I said, why can't we invite this person to church? Ask her. Why? Even when I was in New York, I said, he said, no, they don't invite people. I said, no, we built a relationship. I didn't just see you and I started inviting you. Yes, then I'm, 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 I'm overstepping my bounds. We built a relationship. We talk politics. We talk football. We talk entertainment. Why can't we talk Jesus? Why is Jesus a no-go area? Why are you ashamed of the rose of Sharon, the lily of the valley? Why are you ashamed of the man before whom you dance in the temple? Why are you ashamed outside there when you ought to be proud? He saved you to make you a savior to others. Until you point men to him, men will not know him. You are the one delaying the salvation of your friends. You are the one. I have a checkbook for men of God. I sign checks. Not small money. I don't sign small money. No, I don't sign small money. You remember, you remember yesterday I got out a hundred dollars? Did, did, did I give my prophetic seat today? Please come. Let, let, let me give my prophetic seat. Please come. My son. My son. I forgot to give my prophetic seat. Let me give my prophetic seat. This is my fifty dollars. Add it to that basket. It's my seat to the anointing that you put carry. Please add it to the basket. See, see listen. That I am a Nigerian, I came from Africa, should not make me a beggar? That is wrong philosophy. The God of every color blesses every color. Why should another color be dependent on another color? That is abuse of redemption. Until you are a giver to kingdom, I am giving to the Son of God in Him. Nada yes. yadaba. I've not eaten since Friday. Why can I do that? I started on Monday. I didn't eat Tuesday, Wednesday. I ate on Thursday. I started another one on, on Friday because I see God anoint me to bring in more harvest into your kingdom. When you do not see the harvest, there will be no reason to pray. What will we be praying about? Bless me, Lord. Bless me, Lord. Bless me, Lord. Bless me, Lord. Bless me. Bless me. Me, 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 me. I, 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 I. My, my, my. Until after some time, you yourself get confused. Is this prayer not becoming monotonous? Verse 16 of John chapter 15. I will give you just two more scriptures. I am true. Just two more. After this. If you come to, you come to Nigeria, come, I'll, I'll talk with you later. 
I told them, come into Nigeria. You, you see ministry. You will see souls ah, outside with canopy. They can't find space. Multi-billion or the total built within a year, debt free by the giving of the people. When you see the harvest, signing big checks becomes exciting. That I'm making it happen for Jesus. Look at all your gold in your house. When you die, what will it be used for? The church is talking about expansion. But we are thinking about buying another mansion. To prove what? To who? To who? To who? Do you know people are committing suicide? Even believers are committing suicide in America. Because when you are no more blessing others, you become depressed. Because God created you by salvation to be a channel of blessing. Not a reservoir of blessing. A channel. A channel of blessing. Yadabaya. Labore de Bosha. Mere de Bosha. You saw me speaking in tongues when I was going. I was seeing the harvest. I was not thinking of who to lay hands on. They've laid hands on you. You are falling many times. Falling, falling until you have become a faller. Because every time you fall, you receive an anointing to go and make an impact. You think it's convenient to fast? No. But because of the harvest. You think it's convenient? You see, let me tell you something. Many of you Americans, you don't like to travel. You have everything. Good shopping mall. Good roads. But your dreams are dead. Don't you see how, 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 how beautiful your America is? But where are your dreams? God told me, said, America, the beauty and the glory of America is the graveyard of the dreams of Americans. It's a cemetery. Amer America is not heaven. No, there's a heaven. But you can live a lie that America is heaven. That's why every African wants to come to the heaven. And when they come here, they lost their passion. They start doing, imagine me coming to America doing three jobs. I'm no more doing what I'm doing now. How angels will be mourning and weeping. Imagine. I've, I've met many preachers that came from Africa that are doing four jobs. This is the way they work. Because Ikabo, the glory has departed. Imagine you being ordered around by somebody when you were anointed to be a prophet. How your angels will make your life miserable. Imagine you now go and pick a job. How angels will call an emergency meeting and start persecuting you. Listen, until you are a soul winner. Look at verse 16 of Mark John chapter 15. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go, go and bring forth fruit, that your fruit should remain. Now hear what I said. That whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. That means when you are not a soul winner, angels don't respond to your prayers. I show you scripture. No preaching heresy. That when you pray because you are helping others find the love of Jesus. Look at the psychiatric hospitals full of people that need your love. What are you doing? Look at haughty people. America is full of lonely people living in mansions. No love, no affection. Full of lonely people. You see them in beautiful cars, looking depressed. Come to Nigeria, see everybody laughing, smiling, rejoicing in, in the so-called poverty that they say we have. You see them in the shopping mall, go to the shopping mall, I see people in, in America. I say, what is going on here? Moving zombies. <laughs> Until you reach others. Send that message of love to that yeah. family. Yeah. Yeah. Send that Christmas message. Send that weekly message of Jesus. Yeah. 
to everyone on your contact list. Send the address of this church to everyone you know. Tell them about the dancing. Tell them about the joy. Tell them about the happiness. If you do not do it, angels will not do it. You are the one that must do it. You are the one that must do it. You are the one that must do it. Bagadabaya. Matthew chapter 10, verse 32. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my father which is in heaven. Is that your Bible? That even heaven, your father in heaven will not even recognize you because you are not confessing him before men. Your father in heaven. You see how important it is? Even your father, angels have been mentioned. Prayers have been mentioned. Now the father is mentioned. Then he goes to the next verse. He says, he says, he says, but whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my father which is in heaven. You see why you are suffering? With all your churchianity. Churchianity is not spirituality. Churchianity is not spirituality. Churchianity is addiction to church. Spirituality is obedience to the word of God. Church can become an addition. Like cocaine. Like marijuana. If you are not a tighter, you are a religionist. You are a churchian. If you are not a soul winner, you are a churchian. You love the church. But you hate the commandment of the head of the church, Jesus. You love the building. You love the music. You love the sound. But you eat your tight. You have never done anything sacrificial. Not once. Not once. Have you ever done anything sacrificial? And the Bible said, they that sow in tears. They are the only ones that will reap in joy. You didn't hear what I said. Lift up your hand. Turn to, turn to my last scripture, Psalm 126. That is my last scripture. Lift up your hand. Just turn to Psalm 126, then you lift up your hand. Then I'll say what I want to say. Then we'll pray. I sense, I sense God touching somebody to sign an uncommon check. I sense it in my spirit. What you have never given to God, you are going to give him now. I didn't say what you have never given to a church. There's church offering, there's Holy Ghost offering. There's church offering, there's Holy Ghost offering. Begin to speak in tongues. I sense angels coming here. As loud, as loud. Begin to speak in tongues. Begin to speak in I saw angels coming. I saw angels coming with passes of miracles. I saw angels coming. I saw Marala de Bush. I saw angels. I saw angels. I saw angels. Angels are everywhere. Burela de Bush. Hey. Amen. Amen. Mom, please, could you stand? Mom, please stand. She's 93 years old. Please stand. Give her a big God bless you clap. We love you. <laughs> Pastor Dave, Pastor Dave, the first place I opened my mouth to share the word when I came to Colorado was her house. She gathered chairs and gathered people for me to minister to. What have you ever done for the gospel? It's all about yourself. Nobody must ruffle your chairs. Nobody must stain your rug. Chop the rug. It's your God. Worship him. Your house must be neat. No hallelujah must take place there. Everything must be in order. What is the result? Nothing. What you bought, you became the slave of it. You clean it 20 times. When you lose sight of Christ, all that is becomes your attraction. You clean your resource seven times, clean the compass seven times. She opened her home. I was there for close to three hours. Over three, took me to a prayer temple in her house. You are not interested when preachers come, how are they accommodated? You are not interested. The church must pay for it. You are not interested in their transportation. 
In Nigeria, it's not like that. We pay hotel bills for men of God. That's why the headquarters of God is now Africa. God has left America. We are now bringing the gospel to you that brought the gospel to us. Because you worship Mamo now. Keep feeding, keep feeding those people. You are more important to Jesus than people with 20 Bibles of different translations. He said, I was hungry. You didn't feed me. He didn't say you didn't buy a new Bible. He said, you didn't feed me. He didn't say you didn't study Greek and Hebrew. He said, you didn't visit me in prison. All what you are studying, what do you want to use it for? I'm asking. You study this, you study that, you study this, you study that. What is the use if you are not making a huge difference in people's lives? God is calling America back to missions. Do you you know how many people that would have committed suicide if not for your food? How many people would have committed suicide if not for the food bank? Do you know how many people that would have committed? Do you know hunger is terrible? Do you know hunger is terrible? You are doing a great work. Very yeah. great work. All your family for Jesus. Yeah. You know the meaning? When they get to heaven, there's family meeting. Yes. Are you thinking about heaven? If you are thinking about heaven, nothing will be too big for you to give for heaven's sake. nothing. Your car. We are selling our cars in Nigeria for the gospel. We are breaking our, our savings for the gospel. We are taking the gospel around the world. Crusades by Nigerians. We are buying airtime all around the world. Debt free. We don't beg for money on TV. The believers pay for the gospel to spread. We don't ask sinners for money. Because they will misunderstand. Psalm 126, verse 4. Turn again our captivity, O Lord, as a stream in the desert. Turn again our sickness. Some of you are sick. You need to sign a check for your liberty. Say, turn again our captivity. You are depressed. You need to sign a check for the work of God to move so that angels can, can, can partner with your destiny. Turn again our captivity. You are going to see the answer. You are going to see the answer. You are going to see the answer. The next verse says, Says, what did the verse say? He said, They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. How can tearful offering turn captivity? Because tearful offering will make the gospel go to the ends of the world. The bigger the offering, the bigger the capacity to resource, sacrifice. You are giving conveniently. That is the challenge you have. I've emptied my account many, many times. Do I look poor? The more useful you are to God, financially and materially, the more it blesses you to be more useful. You know what? Somebody paid for me to fly first class to come to Colorado. First class. Over $8,000 from one pocket. Not many people's offering. You know everything that I'm doing here now will bless the generation of that man. Every man of God you empower financially makes you receive generational blessing. It's your sacrifice that made your children to follow your God. What are you sacrificing? They that sow in tears, not conveniently. Not conveniently. They that sow in tears shall reap healing, shall reap deliverance. She she drives me around. Is it convenient to your job? Is it convenient to your job? You need all the monies in the world, but you make sure I lack nothing. Is it convenient to you? No. I told you what God wanted you to do. It will never be convenient. Never. Never. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. Stand up on your feet. Mm. 
God wants you to sow in tears now. I don't know the challenge you are going through. I don't know the challenge. You are going to sign that check? Tie that check to something that is a challenge to your life. Tie that offering to something that is a challenge. God, I want this and this captivity to be turned. You raise a sacrifice. That's what I do every time I face challenge. I raise a sacrifice. There are times you don't have enough money. You add material things to it. There are expensive resources you can sell. You can give the church, give the church the certificate. They sell it. I went to Detroit the first time I came and I taught on sacrifice. We hear the testimony today of what has happened in the lives of those who have been some, some of them dropped their car keys. What are you doing with three cars? When one, two of the cars or one of the cars can be sold and the money can do a lot for souls to be saved. And tied to a rebellious son that you want delivered. So you're not going to sacrifice this money meaninglessly. You give that $10,000, that $2,000 tied to a medical challenge. God turned this captivity this captivity. When, when Solomon overgave God, over a thousand bought offering, God asked, what do you want me to do for you? Offering made God to demand for prayer requests. He said, what do you want me? There are levels of giving that provokes God to do the impossible for you. Not every giving. Crazy giving. Crazy. You will be wondering every time there was sacrificial giving, the glory of God came down in the Old Testament. Every time. You know the power in worshiping God? When it is matched with sacrifice, it becomes explosive. Lift up your hand. Lift up your hand. We are the singers. Please, singers, just come, please. Please, Abe, just come. Something wants to happen here now. I sense Namaya. Worship team, come on. Madabasha. Hallelujah. You know what? Look at what I heard. 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 As worship is going on now, you will, you, will, you will raise a sacrifice. You know what is a sacrifice to you. You know what is a sacrifice. You drop it on the altar. On the altar. If I tell you to do anything, do it the way I said you should do it. If I tell you to do anything. The angels of healing, they are here. Marriage. Breakthrough. They are here. As we worship God, in that atmosphere of worship, you will raise a sacrifice. What you have never given God before, you want to stretch your faith. Give myself away so you can use me. You know this one? I give myself away. Give myself. Let us, let us, let us sing. Hallelujah. Let's sing it together. Hallelujah. Begin to come. Begin to come. Begin to come. I'm standing here. I'm standing here. The anointing is here. The anointing is here right now. The anointing is here right now. But it's a bush. Drop it here. Here, here. Here, right there. Here. Hey, Look at angels here. Look at angels here. Look at angels here. Look at angels here. Sit, you can have your seat. You can have your seat. You can have your seat. 
said as you step out, you are stepping out of limitations. Take that, take that offering, take that check. God said as you step out, you are stepping out of sickness, you are ste stepping out of depression, you are stepping out of the challenges of life. Everyone, you must take a seed that is sacrificial. You stretch your faith. Begin to speak in tongues, begin to speak in tongues. Just lead us in any song that God places on your spirit. Any song that comes to your spirit. Begin to come, begin to come, begin to come, begin to come. Begin to come, begin to come, begin to come. Mada bada bada. Bin the bush shaka bada bada bada. Libra daba shada bada daba. Libra daba. Just take that seat. Come on. Yes. So we pour out our praise. Pour out our praise. It's your something if I drop the microphone there are people here God said if you take that step of sacrifice a new chapter will open your life yeah. don't fight don't let your greed your selfishness fight your healing don't let your greed your selfishness fight your destiny take that on common seed yes you are stretched yes they that sow in tears shall reap in joy are you ready 
Lift up your hands. Look at what I want to do. I'm going to shout seven hallelujah. How many hallelujah? Seven. And I'll teach you how to do it. I'm going to say, I'm going to shout praise the Lord. You allow me to end my, then you shout hallelujah. Do you understand it? So when I'm shouting, praise the Lord, don't join me. When I end my praise the Lord, you shout your hallelujah, jumping, screaming. Every walls of limitation, we collapse. Walls of lack, financial struggles, we collapse. God, we use you mightily. God will use you mighty. Yeah. You're an evangelist. Yeah. You love to share the gospel. It's a call upon your life for your future. You will heal the sick. You will open blind eyes. You will cause, you will cause men to come out of wheelchair. Go and write it if I be a prophet. You have an awesome future, packing out stadiums and giving mass altar call like Billy Graham. Wow. God is taking America back to the days of Billy Graham. Yeah. Yeah. Enough of the church, enough of church. It is time for the harvest. As I shout this hallelujah, a new anointing will come upon you. Anointing for souls. I, I just met you once. Is it once I met you? Once. And I said you must come. I said you must come for this meeting. I met you somewhere else. Am I correct? Listen, until you tell somebody to come, they will not know this address. We had to give her, you know, we had to tell her to come. We gave her the address. And she came. We love you. Until you grow the church, the church will not grow. It's individuals that grow the church. See, see, see what I saw in an open vision. God wants you to begin to think of musical outreach. In packs. Just get musicians together. Play good music. Let people enjoy good music. And we just tactfully and wisely invite them to this place. God said you are too anointed to be isolated. You are not called to play keyboard for this church alone. You are getting it too small. I see your concerts around this nation massive. See the harvest. See something bigger than this. Imagine 5,000 people, you and your band, you are playing. 10,000, 20,000. Man. As I shout hallelujah, God said there will be divine visitation. Do like this, do like this, do like this. Just obey me, do like this. Say I'm ready to shout. I said do like this, do like this. Then do like this, do like this. Just obey me, just obey me. Just obey me. Seven. There was something you didn't add. You didn't add jumping. You add it now. Are you ready? We are too late. Too late. Obey me. Obey me. Say the anointing. The anointing. 
Say the anointing, the anointing. He's setting me free. He's setting me free. He's blessing me financially. wants you to run, scream, jump. You are not, you are not jumping enough. You are not jumping enough. <laughs> Praise the Lord. As we move to the first, fourth one, Leave your seat, do some drama, do some acrobat. Depression is living, sadness is living, diseases are living, poverty is living. Do like this, do like this, open me, open me, open me, do like this, do like this. Everybody, everybody, do like this, do like this. Yes, I, see, I'm excited, I'm excited, I'm excited, I'm excited, I'm excited. Jesus a clap of freedom be excited. As we shout the fifth one, no circumstance can stand your presence anymore. There's a fresh revelation. At the end of this fifth hallelujah, there's going to be a release of grace for laughter, laughter of freedom. Laughter of liberty. God said, as you, as you laugh at the end of your hallelujah, something unusual will take over your spirit, your soul, and your body. said he has a great work that he still wants you to do for him. He said you will live very long. He said he has added to your life. That's what God said. Begin to clap, begin to clap, begin to clap. Begin to laugh, begin to laugh, begin to laugh. Begin to rejoice. Begin to rejoice. Begin to rejoice. Begin to jump, begin to jump, begin to jump, begin to jump and rejoice. And rejoice. And rejoice. And rejoice. Joy. A 
As we shout the last one, any noise you know how to make at the end of it, you are free to make it. As your hallelujah is ending, you start a joyful noise. Yes, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, feel free in the presence of the Lord. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, feel free. Go ahead. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you ready for the last one? Do like this, do like this, do like this, do like this. I am ready. I am ready. I am ready. Let me hear your voice. I am ready. Let me hear your voice. I am ready. Let me hear your voice. I am ready. To make a joyful noise. I am ready. Yeah. These were the nations coming to us. Yeah. Hallelujah. 